insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 71 the dark side of cancellations. Dun, dun, dun. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my energetic and vibrant co-host, which you apparently are neither of those today. Nope. <laughs> Michelle Whalen. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that. Um, how you doing today? Very tired yeah, still. <laughs> you were tired yesterday, too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the heat or lack of something and that would be why we are recording a day late because you passed out around the time we <laughs> recorded yesterday so. yeah I, I at like what ten thirty after i had gone grocery shopping at the the amish farmer's market i came home and i'm like i'm gonna go take a nap thinking yeah. oh it'll be like 20 minute nap no it was two hours yeah yeah so much for that yeah well it's not uh, like we had you know big plans or anything so well that's a sign of the times, I guess. Yeah. So we do have a busy show today. Mm-hmm, we do. Um, and our Disney detective will be talking about the unions at Disneyland seeking to uh, delay the park reopening for safety reasons. Uh, then Disney uh, cancels their uh, hang uh, their Halloween party, which uh, we didn't plan on going to this year, but we've been to many yeah. times in yeah, the past. Yeah, we have. Uh, then uh, Disney World is testing their new hands-off security bag check mm-hmm. down at Disney Springs. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting, throwing some technology at a practical problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In our Star Wars Insights, more bad news. No! Cancellation of Celebration. <sighs> so... Not that we were planning on going. <laughs> we, we were so. pl- none of these things we were planning on yeah, going we to. We weren't planning so on we doing <laughs> any of this stuff. <laughs> and then a little kind of behind the scenes information on uh, what Adam Driver had planned for the backstory for Kylo Ren, which I thought was kind of an interesting little mm-hmm. side note. Then in our entertainment news, the Oscars have been pushed back with some changes to mm-hmm. their eligibility. And um, all the way down there, San Diego Comic Con. They're doing a virtual convention in July. Mm-hmm. So that should be interesting. And then we will wrap up with our insightful picks of the week. Are we ready? Let's do this. All righty. <laughs> Go for Disney Detective. So Disneyland employees uh, unions are asking the state to delay the park's expected reopening in July out of concerns for health and safety. So the reopening uh, is planned in phases with downtown Disney opening on July 9th and the theme park starting to open its gates on July 17th. So the Coalition of Resort Labor Unions, which is about a dozen different labor groups representing some 17,000 workers, wrote to the governor asking for a delay in the reopening. Um, They basically said, unfortunately, despite extensive talks with the company, we are not yet convinced that it is safe to reopen the parks on Disney's rapid timeline. So the group did praise Disney for some of its measures, such as paying the workers salary and benefits for a time after the closure and for coming up with plans to take the temperature of workers as they are entering the workplace. 
but they also feel that there are some issues that are still unresolved, such as plans for testing. So Disney had released a detailed plan to protect the health of the workers, as well as the park guests. And according to the Disneyland website, you know, basically the same measures that we've been hearing about is the mandatory face coverings for cast members and guests, uh, the addition of hand washing stations and physical barriers throughout the resort where appropriate, um, reduced capacity um, to ensure the physical distancing, uh, appropriate signs added to help guests move through the resort, temperature checks for guests prior to entering the theme parks in the downtown Disney district, uh, daily health screenings and temperature checks for cast members, the expansion of mobile ordering throughout the Disneyland app uh, using Apple Pay and, and other options, and then the enhanced cleaning and sanitation throughout the resort. So as of right now, they haven't delayed any of the opening. They've obviously placed their concern for it, but, you know, they're still going, you know, going on uh, as planned at this point in time. So are they citing specific concerns that they have about these measures? Because I, I think, I think it kind of published some pretty extensive. Yeah, I think it, it's really more with with the testing of employees. I think that's kind of where, um, you know, where they they didn't say anything about, you know, we're going to offer testing. And right. maybe that's that one, you know, gray area you now, know, is this, that's out there. Is this testing for COVID or for COVID antibodies? Because I know they're two different tests. One's much more available. Right. Yeah. The there's nothing the article didn't didn't mention. You know, and it and again, it Disney didn't come out and say no. We're gonna you know halt anything. Right. So as of right now, everything is you know still a go. Now, how important or how involved, I guess, are the unions? out in Anaheim. Is everything at Disney unionized? Well, you figure it's 17,000 workers, you know, total or covered. So I'm sure there's probably a number of... But that's among all theme parks out there though, right? Uh, yes. So I'm guessing, you know, depending on your level, you know, of employment with the park or what you do, right? you know... I just think it's interesting because we've not heard a lot from from unionized workers mm -hmm. for Disney in the United States. Usually, we've seen this over right. We saw in this in France, France with <laughs> with everything that was yeah, you know they did going their on protest out there. Right. So, so. interesting. Well, we'll see if it if mm -hmm. it actually uh, holds things up. I know California is a bit more strict on their. Mm -hmm. The reopening requirements too. Right, right. That's why it's taken them, you know, as long to to open up. So. Yeah. So tell us about the unfortunate Halloween party. Yeah. So this was kind of sad, but again, not many people were, you know, surprised by it. So Walt Disney World Resort has officially canceled all Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween parties for 2020. Uh, so here was a statement that was posted on the Disney Parks blog. Uh, it said, while assessing another fall special event, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party, we determined that many of its hallmarks, the stage shows, parades, and fireworks, are unable to take place in this new unprecedented environment. With that in mind, we have made the difficult decision to cancel this year's Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Additionally, Disney's H2O Glow Nights, the nighttime special ticket event at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon, will not take place for the remainder of 2020. Guests who have already bought tickets to these events will be assisted with refunds over the coming weeks. So, again, not really a surprise because... Again, a big part of the Halloween party, besides getting candy and trick-or-treating and everybody wearing costumes, is the special parade that they do, the special fireworks, the special stage shows, the special character meet and greets, which is all stuff that they're holding off doing, you know, probably for the rest of this year, more than likely, you know. So you're not going to see any of that stuff being done, so... So let me ask you, as someone who, obviously, we go to Disney mm -hmm. sometimes multiple times a year. Mm -hmm. We've been there a number of times. You've been there more times than, I think, 
you know, Mickey Mouse has. No. Um, nice try. <laughs> how does this, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about the fact that they continue, and, and with justifiable reason, but they continue to lop off different services that are the appeal of Disney? Like, how does that make you feel about wanting to go back down again? I don't know. I think you need to have, and I think this is something just in general, you need to have something to look forward to. You need to have some sort of hope that things are going to get back to normal. Um, here in New Jersey, starting tomorrow, you know, dentist's offices and doctor's offices are oh, starting to, to look forward to. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, I get to go to my dentist. <laughs> you know, hair salons, nail salons, you know, are starting to open. The restaurants are starting to open, but just for outside seating. You know, it's been since the middle of March. That's, you know, that's a really long time when, when you think about it, that we've all been, you know, in protected bubbles. But, uh, but you know, so, let me play devil's advocate here sure. and say... You know, as of the reporting yesterday, mm -hmm. 19 states are seeing their infection rates right. go up. Some double what they've been seeing. Right. And Florida being among them. And part of that is because things are opening up, but people aren't doing it the right way. Like you had mentioned, you know, the other day, there's a restaurant that you pass on your way home from work where they took up part of their parking lot area and made, you know, an outside restaurant and nobody was social distancing. Everybody was right on top of each other. That's not the way you do it. Whereas, you know, I mentioned to you when I went out yesterday, one of the local diners that's near the, the farmer's market, they had an area set up. It was all fenced in, so you couldn't get to it without going in a certain area. And they had picnic tables set up, and they were all six feet, maybe even more, away from each other. So it was nice and spread out. Even the Amish market that has a restaurant, they had a little area set up. Obviously, not, you know, they couldn't fit the same capacity that they could in the restaurant. And we know that that. You know, the Amish market restaurant. <laughs> yeah, they, they, was, in they you know, it, it's a fire hazard probably because you have everybody on top of everybody. You know, there's a way to do it and to do it right. We even saw it when we went down to Ocean City a couple of weeks ago. How many, you know, how many people weren't wearing masks? Now, granted, most people were keeping their distance from everybody. Like even when we were sitting on the benches, um, you know, that were kind of, uh, you know, under one of the pavilions, most people were kind of keeping their distance, but not everybody was wearing a mask. That's, True. I think the biggest thing is there's a way to do it and to do it smart and not everybody is doing it the smart way. And I think that's the, the thing, you know, and it'll be interesting to see what Disney does. Is Disney going to you know, really police, because I've heard, you know, back and forth things from people that have gone to Universal, where the majority of the people are wearing masks every now and then you do see somebody without. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be enough cast members walking around to enforce it. I have a feeling Disney being Disney is going to be a little bit harder on it and basically say, if you don't wear a mask, you don't come in. It's our house. It's our rules. If you can't abide by it, there's the door. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I think right now that's kind of the attitude we have. It's a, it's a very much wait and see attitude mm -hmm. to see where Disney takes this and, and how strict they enforce it. Like, um, I would love for us to go back down like we did this last year and go down around Christmas time and, and be there because we, you know, we only did the one park and it was rather crowded because it was Christmas Eve and, and also it was Hollywood Studios because of Galaxy's Edge and things like that. I want to see what they're doing for the rides because obviously we know there's going to be limited people in the park, but what are you doing virtual queues for the majority of the ride? Are you allowing more people to have... Um, Fast passes, so again, not a lot of people are waiting on well, on rides. We haven't really of, heard. 
a lot of what they're doing down there now with the reservations mm-hmm. near the park and the no um, uh, food plans. And, you know, right. the, my concern is that there's just so many restrictions right, right. now on what you can do. Right. If you can get in the park. Mm-hmm. But they're still charging the same amount of money. Right. And that's where we were talking about this, you know, the the other night is they really should be giving some sort of discount to you. And that was the thing. If you remember when the park first closed and there were people that had upcoming reservations, you know, they were offering you to cancel. But in a lot of cases, they were pushing out your reservation till later in the year. And for a lot of people that were having their reservation pushed out, they were getting a free dining plan as as an upgrade. Like, ooh, you know. And then, of course, you find out that they do away with it. So now you're like, all right. So for that, you should give me like 50 percent off. Like and and think about like the um, the cruise lines and the airlines that are doing dirt cheap, you know, reservations and things like that. I'm surprised Disney has, I'm sure there's something, well, because I think, I think actually that was one of the articles I I did remember seeing something about um, if you did have the dining plan and since they are um, taking that away, you were going to get some sort of percentage off of your hotel room. Right. Well, give me a percentage off of my park ticket at at that point. Well, because that's the thing. They're not robbing you of your resort experience you can still get the same resort right, experience right they're robbing me of my park experience right. so if i'm getting 70 percent of the park mm-hmm. experience that i should be getting i should be paying 70 percent of what mm-hmm. the park ticket is right and and like i said for for us i think what we did this past december when we went down i wouldn't mind repeating that vacation plan sure. Do a couple days at Walt Disney World Resort, maybe do a park, maybe not. There's, again, enough going on that you don't necessarily need to spend all the day in the park just to actually have a relaxing vacation. Do a couple days at, at Vero Beach, yep. you know, because that was very enjoyable. We, you know, we. Well, and that's it. like, yeah, if we avoid the park, the, the park that yeah. is really what's being affected by right. this whole thing. We'll probably have an enjoyable mm-hmm. time. Yeah. But there's things at the park that we want to do. Absolutely. That's, so. it's, yeah, I don't think I feel comfortable for at least a couple of months. You know, let let, let the park open. Let's see how the guests are. Yep. That's really who it, it is. It's not, I know the park itself and the, the cast members are going to do an excellent job doing what they have to do it's what's the mentality of the other guests and this was a story that i was i was telling you guys last night at dinner there was a a friend of mine who is a travel agent and she posted a rant on facebook because other travel agents were saying oh if you walk around with a drink in your hand you don't have to wear your mask so just you know have an empty cup and walk around then you won't have to wear a mask and it was kind of like Really, you need to buck the system. Well, those are the to same wear a travel mask? agents that would have bucked the handicap. Right, exactly. Too. Here, I'll get you a note from a doctor so that you can get right. you know all your fast passes. So that's that's what I want to. And it ruins it for everyone else. Absolutely, and that's what I want to see how Disney handles the jerks that are trying to do that. If everybody's going there and ninety percent of people are wearing masks, I'd feel better right. about going. Sure. You know, going there. Well, the one thing that Disney is improving is the security check. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the new hands-off security bag. Yeah, so this is something that they've started doing at Disney Springs. They're testing a new security scanner uh, technology with guests that is contactless. And it's basically a a full-body scanner uh, powered by the uh, Evolve technology. And it is said to screen guests quickly and safely. If implemented at the Disney parks, the technology could help drastically decrease the wait times at the theme park checkpoints. Guests would no longer have to open their bags to have Disney security check them. So the company states that with these new scanners, they can check over 3,600 people per hour. Visitors basically can walk through side by side or in a group. And the scanners are made to detect 
guns and other types of weapons. Um, and the system is made to display where there is a potential threat on a person's body or in their bag to security, uh, the security members in real time. Uh, so they got to see this you know, in action. And basically, uh, the Disney security cast members are watching a tablet as people pass through. Um, the system is also supposed to be smart enough to distinguish person, uh, personal items such as phones, wallets, and non-threatening items. Um, and that the scanner can actually check the temperature of guests as they walk through. So here you'd be able to have your temperature checked and your bags checked all in one shot without anybody actually having to to touch you. And it seems like it would be a much quicker system than obviously, you know, what they do today. This this sounds like something out of Star Trek or something. It does. Or, or um Total Recall. Wasn't there oh, the scene yeah. in Total Recall At or the something? Airport going to yeah. 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 And like my question here is, all right, this sounds great on mm -hmm. paper. <clears throat> why, why aren't they using this at the airport? Well, and that's the whole thing, too. If this is up and running, why aren't you using it, you know, in, in other places? Is it just so brand new and, right. and Disney has it, but the airport, you know, airport airports don't and you're taking off your shoes or whatever? Like, it feels like, you know, you don't have to, you know, worry about that. Just think about, again, you know, when we go, you never have a bag so you go through the no bag line now you don't have to separate families everybody can walk through together you don't have to sit and empty out your yeah. pockets you basically just you know walk right through yeah the concept is fantastic mm -hmm. mike i'm curious as to what technology that yeah. they use i mean they have to be using some type of emitted radiation in order to get these kind of reads off there because there's nothing that's going to allow a passive scanner to detect something that's, you know, concealed. Right, right. So I'm waiting to find out how many people think you're going to get cancer from this and what radiation it's using. Right, and like what kind else. of doctor's note are people going to have? Because I'm guessing maybe there'll be a separate offshoot, you know, if you do want And do you have an option of not going through this and instead, yeah. like you can go now, right. you know, instead of going through the scanner at the airport, you can right. have a, a pat down. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Is there going to be a separate pat down right. section for people that don't feel comfortable? Because remember when they instituted the one scanner system, they only would allow adults. Random. Right. Right. You know, they would only pick adults to do it. They never picked kids to do it. So right. obviously if they're having everybody go through it, it must be well, and what safe sounds nice about this is they're they're killing two birds with one mm -hmm. stone. So they're doing it for a weapons check, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're also doing it for a temperature check as right, well. Right, exactly. And, it, nice. you know, and maybe it, it does a better job than actually having somebody look through your bag and, you know, so maybe things that, you know, the people were, you know, just uh, human error were missing, they could catch, well, you know. Well, and, you know, you've had situations where we've gone through and you've had personal items in there. Right. That you don't want people pulling out right. stuff like that. Too. Oh, look, your feminine <laughs> right. items. Like, yeah, so really? Did you need to pull that like, out? Like, it'd be different if you were doing the right. bag checks behind a privacy screen or something. Right, right. So nobody saw, you know, right. your other things and, so. and whatnot. Now, I did want to mention that was part of uh, the other story. So even though um, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party got canceled, they are actually starting the Food and Wine Festival, which normally starts in the fall. That's actually been moved up, and that's going to start in July when the park opens. So that was kind of a... Kind of a trade-off. A trade-off, like, hey, we're going to actually have this. Now, normally they have the concert series that goes along with it that they've obviously canceled because they don't want mass people. Uh, but they are going to have the different musical groups that kind of roam around the park those are still going to be going on so something to look forward to if you are planning on on going this fall well i think that was all we had on disney detective mm -hmm. we'll take a quick break and come back with our star wars insights For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild 
in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Star Wars Insights. <laughs> so, obviously, like you had mentioned, some bad news. So, you know, we have a bad feeling about this. So the organizers of the... Let's try this again. The organizers of Star Wars Celebration 2020 have taken to the event's official Twitter account and with a bummer message basically said that this year's celebration, which was... Uh, slated to take place in August in Anaheim, California, has officially been canceled. Obviously, it's not much of a surprise since we've been hearing basically every convention uh, that was going to be happening this summer has been postponed or canceled. Um, you know, so the organizers broke the news to fans in a tweet that said, At Star Wars Celebration, the health and safety of our fans, attendees, exhibitors, guests, and staff is always our number one priority. Due to the global impact of COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 virus, and in speaking with local and state authorities at the latest public health guidelines related to indoor conventions, we have made the decision to cancel Star Wars Celebration for 2020. While this news is disappointing, we are happy to announce that Star Wars Celebration will return to the Anaheim Convention Center on August 18th of 2022. So, again, not really a surprise, um, but kind of like, uh, yeah, you know. I mean, another, another convention down the tubes, um, which we weren't going to, right? Um, so it, it wasn't a loss on we our We thought side. about it, we, you know, because we, had, we were going to go to the one out in Chicago. And that's the thing is, celebration doesn't happen every year. But for the last couple of years, it seems to have been going on kind of consecutively in, in different locations. So last summer, it was in uh, the Chicago area. This summer, it was supposed to be in Anaheim. So now they're basically taking two years off. Um you know, to plan for 2022. That's what they had been doing. They've been right. doing it every every two years. And yeah. uh, recently with the movies coming out, they mm -hmm. were, well, the movies, the TV shows, the game, right, everything. Right. I mean, there's been a, a Star Wars blitz on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've had a st celebration almost every year mm -hmm. recently. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I mean, maybe 2022 we'll be able to, to head out there for yeah, it. Yeah, um, I'm kind of looking forward to it coming back to Orlando. Right, this that way we don't have well. to fly we right. can drive and buy as much stuff as we Although, want <laughs> what would be very convenient is if they did it in coordination with the d23 convention yes and then we could do that both. would be wow that would be a really expensive trip yeah well and that was like when we did celebration orlando that true was during marathon weekend you were right running so i did i did yeah i did the star wars uh 5k yeah. um so that and we got that well. yeah so it was like a multi-trip so yeah, yeah yeah would be so, nice uh hint hint disney just in case you wanted to make yeah, life just, easy for us just uh, saying that would be a good thing <laughs> So tell us what Kylo Ren's backstory is supposed so to be. So this was actually a story that you found. So Kylo Ren turned to the dark side after waking up one night during, you know, his training to find his mentor, Luke Skywalker, thinking of killing him. But what if his anger started developing long before that? So it seems that uh, Lev Grossman, who is the author of The Magicians, is sharing some outtakes from his 2019 Vanity Fair preview of The Rise of Skywalker. So he actually had spoke to the entire cast uh, for an article that revealed how he, you know, left out something big. 
and that was Adam Driver's backstory for Kylo Ren. He said, I think probably the thing that was missing for me was I wanted to see more about Kylo's childhood. Uh, talking about the, the last Star Wars uh uh, trilogy. He said, I thought that they would go back and show us more about how he actually turned to the dark side. Um, and Adam Driver actually had some interesting thoughts about Ben Solo's childhood. Um, and this is what Adam Driver had actually uh, told him. He said that he thought that both Han Solo and Leia were just way too self-absorbed and into this idea of themselves as heroes to really be attentive parents and the way a young and tender Kylo Ren or Ben Solo really needed to be attended to. Um, and that because he didn't get that much attention, his childhood basically sucked <laughs> to, to say the least. So I don't buy that. That's, yeah. you know, I saw this and I thought, Hey, this is a great father's day story. <laughs> It's a story about <laughs> parents not being very good parents and your children turning to the dark side and becoming mass murderers. What could be a better Father's Day story than that? Happy Father's Day to you. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader himself. Here you go. There you go. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, um, and it's true because you really don't know, you know, besides the little snippets that you saw. But could you imagine how much heat they would have taken painting Han and Leia in such a negative light? Well, that's the thing is, obviously, something went wrong with Han and Leia because they weren't together anymore. They obviously split up. Right. Was it because their son turned to the dark side and both of them were blaming each other for it? Or was it something that, oh, he, bad blood of, you know, Anakin and... That's why he did, you know. But, you know, if you just watch the trilogy for what it is, Luke takes the blame in all this. Yeah. So not only does Luke take the blame for turning as Hannah the, and Leia's the bad son uncle in, you know, to the dark side, mm -hmm. he also gets literally like three minutes of, of screen time in the entire trilogy. It's like, right. how much more disrespect could you throw Luke's way? It's yeah. like, that's yeah. just wrong. But it it would be interesting to to see if somebody did, you know, a, a book or something, yeah. you know, Ben's childhood and and what shaped, you know, a fan well, theory. And that's the thing. If you look at the expanded universe, mm -hmm. there's an extensive storyline about Han and Leia and raising at the time they had three kids. Right. So, you know, in the expanded universe, you had the first ones that were born were the twins, Jason and Jaina. Mm -hmm. Then they had another son who was a younger son. Mm -hmm. And in the expanded universe, their oldest son, Jason, turns to the dark side and mm -hmm. becomes Darth Cadus. Mm. So it's a very similar story, but the, the family, the family um, bonding that happens is very different. You know, they're a, a fairly a tight knit, group of of characters mm -hmm. as the kids are growing up the because a lot of times you know she's leia still this diplomat you right know, she becomes head of state of the new republic and everything and and hands by her side so there is a lot of neglect for the kids the kids are tossed between you know nursemaids and babysitters and stuff like that and they're mm -hmm. always getting into trouble and stuff like that mm -hmm. I could totally see how that would turn someone like mm. Darth Cadus or, or in this case, Kylo Ren to the dark side. Right, right. Um, so it makes perfect sense. Their way sense. to rebel and exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, and and in the case of the expanded universe, it was because he went to explore the possibilities of what he could become. Mm -hmm. And just like with Anakin, he had a vision of doom and gloom. That he thought he was the only person that could save things, and in order to save things, he needed the power right. associated with the dark side. So, yeah, totally a believable backstory mm -hmm. for Kylo Ren. Yeah. So, uh, what else did we have? That was, that it, was for it for Star Wars. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. We'll be back uh, in a minute for our entertainment news. <laughs> Thank you. 
Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com on the web at insightsintothings.com. So tell us about what's going on with the Oscars. So obviously we've, you know, every couple of weeks, there's new things that that pop up with the Oscars, um, talking about what's been uh, eligible, what's not, basically... Um, you know, because the movie theaters aren't open, they had allowed movies that were being streamed on different streaming surfaces to be eligible. So now because of everything, they've actually pushed back when the ceremony and all of the different eligibilities, uh, for being nominated will occur. So originally the show was supposed to be going on uh, February 28th, and now it's been pushed back to April 25th. Um, the plan is that it's still going to be broadcast um, on ABC, um, but just kind of pushed out. Um, and also the idea that um, eligibility was supposed to be from January 20th to December 31st, 2020, has now been extended to February 28th. So they've kind of change the the timeline of when things can be eligible um but the idea uh in a statement they did say that after you know this year they are going to go back to a january to december calendar year so they've extended it obviously due the to the uh pandemic and then it's funny because looking at all of the list of things it's more than just the oscar show that happens so um, they have the voting that begins. Um, so voting is going to begin on February 1st. Um, voting is going to end on the 5th. Then they have the short list come out. Then they, you know, they do the nominations. Um, so then there's, you know, a luncheon and the final voting. There's this whole big timeline that basically got, you know, pushed out, which normally would start in January and now isn't starting until kind of like the end of February. But then even from that point, the Oscars still don't show up for, you know, another couple of months. Uh, the other thing was that they were supposed to be opening a uh, Academy Awards museum this year. And because of everything going on, that's been pushed back. So that's actually now going to be opening um, in April of 2021. So... Again, not really a surprise. You know, they're not canceling it at this point. They're still planning on doing it. They're still planning on a live show, but just being pushed out a couple of extra months. So this is pretty far out at this point in Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming they haven't announced any kind of safety protocols or Mm -mm. anything like that at this point. Yeah, and that's the thing is they're still planning on it being a live show. They're still planning on, you know, people being there. The only thing I could think of is that maybe you only have people that are actually nominated, whereas normally you have everybody else in there, you know, whoever's, you know, uh, in the it club. You know the the it crowd. You know well, and that it's time. Funny. I'm I'm curious how they're going to manage this because the way that they they do this, you know they they pack the mm-hmm. auditorium right. And I worked with a a woman who her sister or someone mm-hmm. was a filler. What they would right. call the fillers, 
And when you would have people that would leave the right. seats to right. go present, right. you'd have these people come in and sit in those seats to look full. Right. So that whenever they did a shot of the audience, you saw everybody, exactly. every seat full. Yeah. Like if somebody had to get up to go to the restroom or to present right. or right. something like that. So there was always this focus on right. making the auditorium look full. Right. Can you imagine what that's going to look like if you're doing yeah, social distancing? Yeah, you figure, distancing? you know, every other seat or, or something. And that's the other thing, too, is we know that later next month, mid, mid-July, mid the movie theaters are supposed to be opening up. And most of the movie theaters around here, you, you know, you have to buy your ticket a couple of days in advance and you pick your seat. I'm sure they're already going to have blocked off seats that are available for you to pick and seats that aren't like buffer seats. Like yeah. buffer seats, I'm sure they're probably going to do something like that. Maybe just who's nominated and a guest. Maybe you won't even be allowed a guest. Maybe it'll just be, you know, just whoever is well, being nominated. And that's the thing. It's so far out at this point in time. Yeah, they who might knows not where have we'll any safety protocols that they're right by by then. You know, by then we might not need to. Maybe, right. but could you imagine watching an Oscars? With oh, it would be all hysterical. the stars wearing face masks. Yeah, everybody two seats away from each yeah. other. Yeah, it'd be like watching a Donald Trump rally. <laughs> There'd probably be more people at the Oscars than his rally. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Sorry. Anyway, so. Just saying. <laughs> should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if the rule changes are going to lead to eligibility for any movies that wouldn't normally have been eligible this year. Yeah. You know, so. that that's the thing is they're extending the timeline even for like um, for best song and for different categories. You know, things are changing. So it'll be interesting to see what gets in that normally wouldn't and what doesn't get in well and you know. and you know our discussions of the last two oscars mm-hmm. we've done on this uh podcast have centered almost exclusively around their attempts to restrict movies right from, being from like it. netflix and and things like right. that we're here not only do you have things that were on netflix that are eligible you know, but that didn't get to play multiple, in a theater. Multiple new streaming services are right. out there with Disney Plus, mm-hmm. Peacock, and stuff like that. You've got movies that were released online because of the right. pandemic that right. weren't in theaters. Right. So, so how do you determine? Because their guideline was always, it's fine if it was streaming, but you had to play in le- at least one theater in the California, in, in Los Angeles, in Los County. Angeles County, blah 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 blah. Yep. But this year they said, even if it didn't and it went to streaming, it would be fine. So now you'll have a lot more movies that yep. normally wouldn't be that should be able to be nominated. Yeah. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Tell us about. San Diego Comic Con. So this we we knew was was happening. Obviously, they had made the decision kind of early uh, in in everything that they were going to be postponing and canceling uh, Comic Con, which for the first time in fifty years. Um, so that kind of shocked people. But again, it it wasn't really. Um, you know, it wasn't as shocking because with all the safety protocols and everything and knowing how many people attend San Diego, it was obviously the smartest thing to do. So now San Diego has revealed its plans for Comic-Con at Home, announcing free and unlimited attendance to the virtual con- convention, which is now set to take place July 22nd to the 26th. So earlier this year, Comic-Con had officially canceled due to the corona pandemic. Um, A virtual version was just announced shortly after to kind of fill the void by the popular annual event. So San Diego Comic-Con has now announced its plans for its first ever virtual convention, which will be free, which is awesome. Um, So for the first time in our 50-year history, we are happy to welcome virtually anyone from around the globe, a spokesperson uh, had said, through stay-at-home condition, though stay-at-home conditions may makes this a very difficult time we see it as an opportunity to spread some joy and strengthen our sense of community so um you know obviously they have um 
you know, all the different panels. So now they'll be able to be accessible. Uh, the other thing, too, is that they are going to offer online various limited edition products and T-shirts and things like that, things that you would normally be able to purchase at Comic-Con and usually only yeah, that's if you usually, went there. That's usually one of the biggest draws of Comic-Con. Right. So now they're actually going to make it available. I'm sure still limited uh, you know, limited quantities, but now anybody will be able to, to purchase them online. Um, so they're going to have exclusive panels and presentations uh, related to comics, gaming, television, film, that basically, you know, what they're known for. Um, they're also going to be having um, a masquerade, uh, some gaming and other activities for participants to uh to uh, att- for activities for attendees to participate in, um, so it's set again for the twenty second to the twenty sixth. Attendance again is free, but they are gonna. <laughs> I thought this was cute. Provide badges for pr- fans to print out and wear as they log in for their, oh, you funny. know, so you can wear your little thing. Um, yeah, so kind of kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see um, because again, and something that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. Wizard World has been already doing these virtual uh, panels. Almost every other day, it seems that, you know, that they're doing them um, with different experiences where if you really want to have a one on one chat with somebody or get a signed autograph from them, you can pay, you know, an additional fee. But just to watch the panel is free. And even if you miss it being live, they do post it on their their YouTube page. So I'm wondering if uh San Diego is going to, you know, do the same thing. Um, So as of right now, Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con is supposed to be returning in July of 2021. But the Stay Home Edition, obviously, uh, will be coming out. If you subscribe to their YouTube channel, you'll obviously get updates as they come. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, We'll be right back with our Insightful Picks of the Week. Okay. Go for your insightful pick. So this is a show that I told you about, and thankfully you didn't start watching it and steal it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so it is called The Great Debate, and it is uh, found on the Sci-Fi Network, uh, or you can find it online on SciFiWire.com, I believe. Um, so Sci-Fi Wire's The Great Debate is a televised version of the debate panels that Sci-Fi Wire would actually present at Comic Cons uh, and other conventions, basically pitting four very funny people against each other as they debate various pop culture items to see who comes out as the winner. Um, in this televised version, uh, the host Baron Vaughn uh, and his trusty computer DB8 determine the winner of each debate and then at the end pick two people for the big debate at the the end. And it's really a chance for five pu- funny people to goof off and, you know, ha- have a good time. Um, I watched the one episode and it was it was funny. It, it really was. So you had Orlando Jones, Adam Savage. Uh, Jonah Ray and Amber Nash basically take on nostalgia. So, you know, the first round was they had a a table full of various items from, you know, the 80s and 90s, and they had to defend which was, you know, the most awesome, like which they should bring back. Um, So, you know, so... Uh, Orlando Jones goes for the brick telephone and is like, yeah, this was sexy. And if you needed it as a hammer, you could use it, <laughs> you know. And then um, and then Adam Savage takes the Palm Pilot and he's like, look how much information you could hold. And he pulls out a piece of paper. He goes, just as much as I have on this. And that's OK. You don't have to worry about backing it up to the cloud because if you lose all your information, you can just start fresh all over again. <laughs> Just, you know, and then uh, and then the one was um, a laser disc. 
you know, and they pop out the laser disc and it's like, look, it's sexy and lasers and everything. And, you know, where else could you see behind the scenes stories that you can't find anyplace else? Um, you know, and then finally it was the Zune and it was like, yeah, this was going to take over uh, for your iPods. And where's your iPod now? Right. You know, and then- <laughs> They basically take, like, the phone and the Palm Pilot and the Zune and they put it together and they're like, look, it's an iPhone. <laughs> so it's just, you know, things that you go, yeah, that's totally, you know, totally makes sense. You know, and then, you know, the next round they, they were basically battling, like, what's better. Um, so it was uh, Kit, the car, versus the Battle Cat. Like, which would you rather have? And it was like... Well, yeah, Kit looked really cool, but, you know, secretly you knew you wanted that, you know, badass green cat that nobody would, you know, mess with. Um, you know, so that was that was really funny. What the what was really funny was the final round was who was the better sensei, Yoda or Mr. Miyagi? And it was just hysterical. So, you know, if you're a kid that grew up now, granted, I don't know if every debate is 80s or 90s you know, related, but this episode was definitely meant for people our age, you know, because it was so funny because every now and then there would be comments that were made. And obviously the audience that was there, a lot of younger kids, they'd be like, yeah, go ask your dad. He'd know about this, you know, type of of comment. So really funny show, half hour episodes, need a good laugh, have some fun with nostalgia. And again, it's, you know, a bunch of geeky people talking about geeky things. So if you're that type of person, which we are, perfect show to watch. Nice. Nice. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week uh, should come as no surprise to anyone is a documentary about war. About war. My pick this week is World War II Total War on Amazon Prime. The Second World War was a total war in which massive armies advanced, confronting whole populations with impossible choices. The manufacture of weapons, transformed industry, and the workforce. Area bombing campaigns reduced cities to rubble. Sieges doomed populations to starvation. Racial policy sponsored campaigns of genocide, all told through incredible archive footage and expert interviews. What more could you ask for? Sign me up. <laughs> the show itself is interesting because unlike most World War II documentaries that look at the specifics of the battle or they look at the generals or the strategies and stuff like this, This series itself is dedicated to looking at the effects that the war has on everything else, whether it's the economy, the industry, the people at home, the people that are in the middle of a war zone. It looks at all the collateral damage almost. Um, And it, it really puts the perspective of total war and it shows the evolution of total war starting in the in the 1800s when, you know, we still had people that were lining up in lines of battle and people showing up on battlefields with picnics to watch the battles, you know, down right, right to where we wind up with total war with entire cities being destroyed. It doesn't focus on the destruction of the cities. It focuses on the effect that it has on this, the population, the citizens, and it gives you a very rounded feel for what war does to the countries that are afflicted by it. Uh, It doesn't glorify the war. It doesn't, you know, turn individual generals or or soldiers into heroes. It doesn't do any of the stuff that most war documentaries do. It doesn't, doesn't try to make the war look appealing, but it doesn't try to make it look atrocious it it shows you a very realistic view of the effects of war on on a population um so world war ii total war streaming now on amazon prime and we'll be back in a minute less than a minute for our afterthought So 
what do we have for afterthoughts? So, like we were talking, um, virtual comic cons are, are popping up all over the place. Uh, so it seems uh, starting uh, actually. This Friday, they were doing something. Um, on Monday, they'll be doing a Chicago Fire, Chicago PD uh, virtual panel. Uh, then on the 24th, they're going to be doing a Gotham. Uh, on the 25th, uh, Krypton, which was a show we, we used to watch until Comcast screwed us over. Uh, <laughs> then next Friday, uh, A Walking Dead uh, panel with a bunch of different uh, characters from that. And then uh, next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, uh, Supernatural with a couple of uh, cast members. So it'll be in our show notes uh, if you're interested in, in looking them up. And again, like I said, for a lot of the Wizard World stuff, if you do miss when they go live, if you do go to their YouTube channel, they have all of them usually posted afterwards. Very cool. Uh, another programming note, check out our long form, uh, articles on medium at medium.com slash insights into things. Now we've got a number of those up there that are related to topics we've discussed on the show. Um, uh, subscribe to us on Apple podcasts and any podcast, uh, aggregator that you use. Uh, we stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email us at comments at insights into things.com on Twitter. We are at insights underscore things on YouTube. We're at youtube.com backslash insights into things. You can get all of our material on the web at www.insights into things.com or the audio version at podcast at insights into entertainment.com. Or on the Evil Network, Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. That is it. Another one in the book. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.